What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. We are working on the OBS Power Stroke today uh, and the Beetle. So there is Beetle content in this episode. We are on an adventure with the OBS right now. A journey of sorts. Yesterday was quite an insane day with this truck and I didn't film any of it because it was a nightmare. <laughs> it wasn't good. <laughs> so in the last episode, you saw the replacement O-ring on the ICP sensor on this 7.3. Psych. Psych. Viton O-rings. All points led to good replacement. Size must have been off a little bit, and I'll tell you why. So we did the O-ring on the ICP sensor, which honestly looked like the majority of our oil leak. I mean, there's some oil-like moisture around the turbo pedestal and a few other things, but... What was causing the actual oil leak, the dripping of the oil, seemed like it was a bad O-ring on the ICP sensor. Because when we pulled that out, the O-ring was in two pieces. So I did an O-ring, put it in, started the truck, we degreased the truck one more time, did the engine, cleaned up the engine bay, and backed the truck out. I had it idling outside for 20 minutes, not a drop of oil under it for 20 minutes. So we got in it, ran some errands, ran to Walmart, came back out of Walmart, Notice something under the truck. Well, that thing was a puddle. I mean, puddle under the truck of oil. We pop the hood and the whole engine bay is just splattered and covered with oil. I mean, like garden hose, spray nozzle of oil everywhere. And we can't tell from where because everything's covered in oil. So nothing is showing on the dipstick at this point. That's a long dipstick. Like the ad mark is a ways up on a power stroke dipstick. I only had two quarts or so of 1540 in the truck. So we put those two quarts in and just hammered home. And it's only like maybe four miles or so. We got back and this thing was dumping fuel, dumping. We popped the hood while it was still running. I was behind the wheel. Corey kind of took a look in the engine bay. I revved it up, which obviously creates more PSI. And it was geyser of oil coming out of that sensor. O-ring on that sensor that we replaced was pulled away, like wide open spot. We fixed that. I bought a whole new sensor because that came with an OEM O-ring on it. They're expensive. They're like a hundred bucks, a little over a hundred dollars. There's nothing wrong with my ICP sensor except the O-ring. So I just did the sensor, came with a brand new O-ring, degreased the engine once more, sprayed that down, cleaned it up, started the truck, revved it up, got the PSI way up. It's tight. Everything's good. And to spare you guys all the talking head segment, it looked like we had another massive oil leak that we couldn't locate. Turns out, Corey pulled the pan between, like basically the pan that's under the flywheel, between the engine and the transmission. We pulled that because that's where it was leaking from very badly and very profusely. This was filled with oil, that bottom of that pan. We pulled the pan, cleaned everything up, and ran the truck without that pan and ultimately stopped leaking oil. So we think the leak was so bad that it somehow got down in there, filled that pan up right full, and that's what was giving us the thought that we had a second equally as massive oil leak going on. So now that that's out, mm, I think we're just about buttoned up on the oil leak issue on the OBS. Today is Monday. We are leaving for Fort Myers, Florida for Eurotripper Thursday at like 3 a.m. or something like that. So we have today, tomorrow, Wednesday. Wednesday is supposed to be hook onto the trailer, load up the car, pack, get everything ready, right? So we've got today and tomorrow to get the truck and the Beetle ready to go. We've got more to do on the Beetle. We still have a fuel leak and a coolant leak in this thing. So Corey and I just ran to Ford, the local Ford dealership here in Chattanooga, and got two factory hard fuel lines uh, as you can see, these things have been on a shelf for years. These are a hundred bucks. It's crazy, but we've got fuel moisture on the front of the motor and these run down the front of the motor, uh, to a push to connect fitting down underneath on the frame rail. So we're going to replace these ones, a send ones, a return. We also picked up the water separator valve, uh, which goes into the fuel filter bowl. So this is the water separator valve. This is the water separator lever, uh, to drain your your fuel filter. So those are going in. That had some moisture on it, some actual fuel on it. We won't bore you to death with OBS stuff, but that's what we're starting this episode on. And then we got some cool stuff we're doing on the Beetle. Some final tinkering, but also we want to buff the paint and do a few other things on the Beetle as well. So keep your fingers crossed the truck's ready to go because the whole trip is hinging on the truck being ready to haul about 12 hours each way to Fort Myers. And 
to get something else done while we're in Florida as well that we have yet to tell you about. All right, so update. Corey's been hammering on these fuel lines. Got the new lines in. So while Corey buttons up the truck, I think I'm gonna tinker on the Beetle a little bit. Uh, we've got a few other things we wanna do to this before we leave for Eurotripper. And some of those things we're gonna do in this episode. You may have already noticed that on the Beetle, we're missing the center button on the steering wheel. And it's giving a total unfinished look to the car. But what it did in the 700, since the BMW, is on a beetle pan is I made a laser cut, laser engraved custom center button or center cap rather that has the vintage BMW logo on it. And so that's just a quarter inch thick piece of black acrylic that's laser cut to a little bit smaller diameter that'll fit in here, not pop out with a 16th inch thick black acrylic that engraves white that I engraved the vintage BMW logo on. And I laser cut these tiny little notches on the sides. So if you have to get it out, you can just get like a paper clip or a razor blade or something in there and just pop it out. Since we're missing the one on the 64 Beetle, I think I'll make a custom one for that as well. All right, so before I cut the face, I guess we're just gonna test fit this, make sure this works. Oh yeah, that'll work. I've got the 16th two color acrylic in here now, and this is a black that engraves white. So this has a white core to it. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna cut out and engrave the face of the center cap. And we'll make a two piece center cap out of it. All right, and cleaned. Washed off. Now we've got two pieces, but since this two color acrylic is so thin, I want to double it up behind the quarter inch thick acrylic. So we got something pretty substantial we can fit in there. So the notches are on the cover plate as well. So we'll index them up. All right, so here it is. One piece acrylic welded to a piece of quarter inch thick solid black acrylic. So what I'll do now before we put this in the car, the steering wheel is not quite straight when we're driving the car straight after we did the alignment. So I'm gonna get that aligned straight on the splines uh, just so when we put this in, we don't have to pry it out anytime soon. How goes it over here? How it goes. <laughs> yeah, last few fuel lines are going in and then just button everything that I took out of the way back in. Oh, yeah, and yeah, yeah. should be okay. Okay, so. There we go. I think we're good. All right. Well, the notches on the side kind of help you line it up and put it in somewhat evenly. I dig it. Yeah, I like it. Fits in real flush too, which is awesome. All right guys, as the sun sets, I degreased the transmission. Since as you guys probably have seen in previous episodes when we've had the thing on the lift, it is disgusting. So I degreased it, got under there and pressure washed the daylights out of it. We're getting close to driving this again. Gotta go through the brakes. We got a real tight spot in the brakes. I think it's up front, driver's side. So we'll get that apart. We'll get everything sorted. Corey just finished up the fuel lines on the truck. And we are in the middle of an oil change. How's it going in here? It's going. Just drained out what was left of the oil that we didn't leak out. And I'll tell you, there was not enough oil. <laughs> oh, boy. It usually fills that green bucket that oh, you I'm, specifically I've, for this 15 quarts. I've leaked. Yeah, I've drained this into that same drain pan. A quarter of the way full, maybe. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> they say those injectors will shut off when you lose too much oil in these power strokes or you know these direct injected diesels we made it home the injectors didn't shut off thankfully but yeah sounds like we didn't have enough oil in that pan we did leak a lot in the driveway after we got home a after lot. driving it too so yep. it's fine new icp sensor uh that seems to be holding well yeah the water drain fuel water drain valve, valve. yep yeah we did that that was another almost 100 bucks Fuel lines were 100 bucks. ICP sensor was over 100 bucks. Yeah, I've thrown about 
including the oil change, four or five hundred dollars. Definitely four hundred with the oil change. About five hundred dollars into this thing in the last few days just to get it ready for the Euro Tripper trip. We're gonna fill the fuel bowl up with some ATF that'll help clean the injectors out. I even have the Ford Motocraft stuff. How about that, OBS boys? Every time you do a fuel filter, it's good to. First of all, it's good to prime it. You want to fill that filter bowl right up to the top so minimal air has to go through the system and you can prime it easily and start it because diesels are notorious for being hard to prime if you've run them out of fuel, which essentially we've done here. You can hear it running. Ugh. I accounted for the volume in that fuel bowl that the filter would take up, so I stopped like a good quarter, maybe even a third from the top. Oh, I can hear it. <laughs> and that wasn't enough. So maybe fill it halfway up and then stick your cap with your filter in to see uh, if it'll overflow or not. It overflowed a lot. Really? Yeah. All right, good frosty morning. Next day, Kayla's GTI out here on jack stands. So an update on the truck, and this is turning into a truck episode, and that was not the plan. Turns out we got everything done. Corey put in a full day on that truck yesterday, and one of the quick connect lines at the bottom of the brand new hard line we put in that connects over to the frame rail gave way, and it's just pissing fuel. So Ford cannot get those lines. I found them online through some performance shops, so they can be ordered, but not in the time that we need them. So we have some Dorman quick connect to barb fitting fittings coming in in the next couple hours. We got some 3 8 high pressure fuel line that we're gonna put to them. And we got some fuel injector clamps that we're gonna use. And we're ultimately going to remake this soft line. Now this soft line has a 5 16 line that comes in one end and a 3 8 that goes out the back end. So we've had to use two different sized Dorman quick connects on it. It's a deal. And we leave the day after tomorrow. Tomorrow I don't wanna be working on anything, including the Beetle. I wanna be able to hook up to the trailer, load the car up, pack, Make sure everything's good to go. So we got another long day today, uh, but huge shout out to Perry and Hal at Quick Everett's for all of the last second help. Mounting these up for Kayla, but also mounting up some rollers for me. Uh, for hopefully, if we get to Florida with my trailer, uh, we got some really cool news for you guys on the way back. All right, well, it's finally starting to warm up out here a little bit. So we've had the beetle sitting in the sun to help warm the paint up a little bit. We're going to basically polish out what's left of the original paint and some parts of the primer. This is something that I've done a lot on all of my patinaed cars. So what else we're gonna be doing is working on the wheel covers, the hubcaps. You can see this one's already polished up nice. We'll basically take a chrome polish of the bumper and that'll help eat up a lot of the little surface rust pieces. All right guys, wanted to tell you about these limited edition Lotus Garage key rings that I made. I'm bringing these to Euro Tripper with me and these are made from the very same light blue that engraves white acrylic that I made the Euro Tripper awards with. So I've only made 25 of these. I'll have them with me at Euro Tripper. So if you're seeing this on Thursday or Friday before Euro Tripper, find me on Saturday at the show. Let's sell these things out. Hey, so uh, yeah, the water separator valve was already leaking when we filled the fuel bowl with ATF to prime it before we started it. It was already leaking. From the separator valve itself. Figures, par for the course, brand new part. It's what, it's eight o'clock at night right now. We were supposed to have the Beetle done. The truck, yeah, it's the preparation for Euro Tripper leaving literally tomorrow night is like exhausting. It's it's kicking our butts. Seriously. Oh man, it's running. And it's not leaking anything. Corey was the champion on this one because uh yeah. 
Yeah, I, I did everything three times though, so I don't feel like the champion. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next day, truck. Seems like it's sorted. No puddles under it this morning after driving it last night. Just degreased the whole engine bay. Washed it for hopefully the last time. Washed the whole truck as well. Currently working on the interior with some of our boys from Auto Finesse. Working on the dash. Man, that dash was brand new with mm -hmm. perfect patina. Yeah. <laughs> the Beetle has gone under a total transformation. Got all the paint, including the patina, buffed out. I mean, it gave it like this matte look, but all the primer is darker now and actually reflects light. Man, the car looks so good. Total transformation, not just height-wise, but just finish-wise. So yeah, we'll get this out soon. We're gonna take the truck for another test drive, make sure everything's tight there. Because as we're filming this, it is Wednesday, a little after 1 p.m. I wanna be hooked on and loaded up before dark tonight. It's a totally different car. The paint shines now, even the primer's darkened back down again. It's nice and smooth, we've cleaned the glass. Hubcaps are shiny, bumpers are shiny. This thing's just about ready to go to Florida. And luckily, I think the truck's almost ready to go to Florida too. My goodness gracious. All right, Volkswagen gods, bless us. <laughs> Please bless us. We've worked so hard for this. <laughs> so we're on the move. We got like some squeaks and stuff, but I think we're in agreement that the axles and fulcrum plates seem to be okay at this ride height. I mean, it's making a little bit of noise, but I don't think it's coming from the axles. Had to get to that ethanol free gas station. All right, guys. Well, I think we are just about ready for the trip to Euro Tripper, man. Corey was a huge, huge help. <laughs> My gosh, the truck, the Beetle and the truck were just so taxing this week. The last three days, we've been nonstop on this stuff. And while I got like the awards done for the show, I got a handful of other things done, like either on the Beetle or just in the shop. Corey just hammered it out on that truck. So we're really going to Fort Myers because he stuck it out when I <laughs> was kind of like, that might be it, but no, he stuck it out and it's not even leaking anything right now, which is unbelievable. I mean, it's just, I know, <laughs> cross your fingers for us. As you're watching this, we're somewhere out on the road on the way to Fort Myers. But the Beetle, I mean, we're, we're almost there. We got a handful of small things to tidy up once we get back from Eurotripper to continue prepping it for the giveaway. And I really do wish the giveaway was live right now while we're building the car, but I'm just working logistics out. Just working logistics out this is kind of my first go around with this type of deal so bear with me on this we'll we'll get this thing sorted but in the meantime this thing is coming together super well well thank you guys so much for watching and for all of the support it's been a long week this episode's been over the course of a few days but we got a lot done if you guys see us at euro tripper come up and say hi also want to give a huge thanks to everesto and coney shocks yet again for being a part of this project and Max and Jesse and the guys over in England at Everesto, just killing it on this air-cooled Volkswagen stuff. I, make sure to hit them up. If you've got an air-cooled Volkswagen and you wanna go static low, if you wanna go air suspension, they make so much stuff. Go back and watch the first few episodes of this build and see all the stuff that we got from them. It's the highest quality out there. They're enthusiasts. They build their own cars as well. Um, so I'm really looking forward to working with them on the Auto Union project. I just can't wait to, uh, yeah, to use their stuff in the 1000 SP. It's the best out there. So huge thanks to those guys for supporting us and you guys for supporting us as well. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys so much for watching and for all the support. We'll see you down at Eurotripper or in the next episode.
Of course we can't get it started when we want to put it on the trailer. 